The origin of this build is a commission I got for a Space Wolf themed Redemptor Dreadnought, who would be positioned mid swing. This seemed fun, so I took on the commission and started by posing the Redemptor's legs. One of the nice things about the Redemptor kit is that the legs and arms are fully posable, which made this step a lot easier. To get the right pose, I looked at various lunging poses and played around with what the Redemptor legs could look like until I had something I was happy with for now, though I later went in and optimized it to better fit with the pose of the arms once those were in place. To accommodate the forward lunge of the legs, I cut off the front toe of the Redemptor's back leg, glued on a spacer, then glued the toe back on at a different angle. Dreadnoughts on the whole are stubbly built with short, thick limbs, which was a problem for this build as the original articulated arm the Redemptor comes with simply wasn't going to be long enough for a full-on swinging motion. I needed an alternative, and I settled on this leg section from a Grey Knight Dread Knight. It has a nicely rough-built look to it and is already posed at a good angle. The Redemptor's shoulder joint wasn't designed for the range of movement I need to match that angle though, so I carefully snipped off the forward portion of the socket. The arm was looking a bit thin at this point, so I scraped the inside clean and sandwiched in a pair of plastic art sheets to give it a bit more heft. The axe I planned on using was the one from the Space Wolf Dreadnought. It originally comes grasped in a servo hand. The problem though is that the hand is grasping the haft of the axe at a right angle, and that's not the correct finger placement for a mid-strike. I thought for a bit about attaching the servo hand to the Dreadnought leg as is anyway, it being a robot hand and all, but it still didn't look quite right. Instead I sliced off the attached finger on the handle and then glued it between the two leg sections so it looked like it was connected between the two circular parts. Dreadnoughts are massive robots and there's no reason the axe shouldn't simply be directly fused to the arm without the middleman of a hand grasping it. To attach the arm to the torso of the Redemptor, I pushed in a ball of Procreate then positioned the arm mid-swing. You can see here that I cut off one of the support beams of the upper arm so it could be positioned as far forward as possible. I also angled the arm inward slightly as I knew I wanted the torso to be leaning forward once attached to the legs, and that would keep the axe blade horizontal to the ground. This is the pauldron of the Redemptor combined with the draped fur from the Space Wolf Dreadnought. I used more Procreate to attach it over the shoulder, but would later switch it to the other shoulder because it fit the flow of movement better there and gave a stronger sense of lunging forward. For a head, I picked one of the cyborg wolf skulls from the original Space Wolf Dreadnought which make up its pair of frost claws. I felt like this made for a more interesting look than the original simple slit the Redemptor features, while still also getting across that there's a marine entombed inside the Dreadnought peering through the wolf's cybernetic eyes. Speaking of, I'd originally picked this one because of the two claws it has a more prominent cyber eye, but once in place it looked a little silly, so I later switched it for the non-cyber eye one, which is a little more restrained and sinister looking. One of the most important parts of a great miniature is its pose, and part of creating a great pose is to create a sense of movement. If I really wanted to sell the lunging pose of the Dreadnought, I needed to nail that or he would just look kind of silly with his one outstretched arm. To help reinforce the lunge, I was careful to attach the Dreadnought's onslaught cannon in a position where it looked like it's trailing behind him slightly in the way the off arm would in a real lunge. The next step was to start making the Redemptor look specifically like a Space Wolf Dreadnought and not some basic bitch Astartes Dreadnought. To achieve that, I harvested the front panel from the original Dreadnought which had all kinds of wolfy regalia on them. They're not quite the same size as the panels on the Redemptor, and getting them to fit was tricky. I ended up cutting a bit off the top and bending the lower part. The next step was to armor up the legs of the Redemptor. I don't love how rounded and primaricy they are, and they needed more wolf flavor. I started by slicing down the knee armor and joint of the Redemptor and replacing it with that of the Space Wolf Dreadnought, which has roughly similar diameter. These are the two tomb portions the kit comes with. I wasn't going to be using either for the torso, so I sliced off the arch portion and glued to them the thigh portion of the Redemptor. This helped to bulk them out while also upping the wolfiness of the Redemptor. One of the coolest portions of the original Space Wolf Dreadnought is this massive shield. The original was actually holding it in his left hand, but that didn't really make sense for this Dreadnought with his Onslaught Cannon, but I still wanted to incorporate it somehow. What I ended up on was attaching it to the back of the Redemptor as though it had either been slung there until needed, or simply a revered relic of the chapter that the Dreadnought carried as a kind of ambulatory shrine. On the Dreadnought's right side, I decided to beef up the Onslaught Cannon by attaching the original Wolf Dreadnought's own Gatling Gun beneath it. Is this needed? Not really, but it looks hella cool. I also added this pelt to hang from the cannon, which along with the pauldron furs and the lines of runes gave a nice sense of movement, the pelt streaming behind the Dreadnought as he lunges forward. This is a bit from the Necromunda Corpse Grinder kit. For Space Vikings, Space Wolf iconography has a criminal lack of skulls, so this bit was kind of perfect to give the Dreadnought a touch more of a grim aspect. 
To try and broaden Space Wolf iconography even more from its single-minded wolfiness into a more broad Viking aesthetic, I attach this horn from a Fire Slayer kit to his thigh and use green stuff to sculpt straps around it. I take it off the Redemptor's legs to make this process easier, but also so I can modify the proportions of the Redemptor. They've always kind of annoyed me and seemed too squat, so I attach plastic card to both the hips and torso. This would both raise the torso from the legs and also allow it to be pushed forward. I also removed the coffin portion and cut the armor plate down a little so the skull was more visible. Before gluing torso and legs back together, I took the opportunity to replace the original nose bolters with heavier ones from a Leviathan Dreadnought. They look less smooth and futuristic, which seemed right for the Space Wolves. To continue that less sophisticated look, I popped off the Redemptor's knee guards, carved down the original knee guards quite a bit, and glued a pair of pistons over the knee. I really liked how this looked for a couple reasons. It makes the Dreadnought grittier, the legs thicker, and also adds detail which is generally a good thing for any model. At this point, it was time to finally glue the axe in place. Honestly, it's a little small for the Redemptor now, more hatchet than battle axe, but it was the best option I had and I thought could still work if integrated into the Redemptor arm so it just looked like the bladed end of the limb. Before gluing though, I wanted to add a little spice to the model. This is a Tyranid Hormagond. Ever since the commissioner had asked the model to be posed mid-swing, I'd been playing around with the idea of having the Redemptor's axe splitting it in two. The motion was right for it, and it seemed like a great way of adding even more dynamism to the model. I sawed into the Hormogot at a diagonal that I thought would look natural for being split in two by an axe in mid-air. I really wanted to get across the idea that the Hormogot had been mid-leap when the Dreadnought sliced it in two. Ironically, for the thing that was going to be cutting it in two, the axe was what was going to be keeping the Hormogot in the air. To achieve that, I shaved down the line on the axe so I could get a clean bond. I glued both bottom and top of the Hormogaunt to the axe blade, then checked to make sure the angle was in line with the Redemptor's pose. I attached the arms of the Hormogaunt, angling them outward to try and really sell the idea that the force of the axe's impact was exploding it. The angle of the head was more frustrating and took an annoying amount of carving, but ended up looking pretty good. Next up, I used green stuff to fill the gap between Hormogaunt and blade and sculpted a vague impression of blood and viscera. I should have done this before attaching the Hormagaunt, but I used a candle to repose the tail to look like it was trailing the force of impact. I attached the right leg to achieve the same effect. To emphasize the idea even more, I coaxed green stuff into a side blood geyser. And with that, my Space Wolf Redemptor Dreadnought was ready to ship to its commissioner. In all, I'm really pleased with how he turned out. His stance is really dynamic, and all the furs give him a great sense of movement. The only thing I'd probably change is the Hormagaunt portion. While it looks great, it also kind of looks hilariously small now compared to the bulk of the Redemptor. If this wasn't a commission, I probably would have gone full diorama and attached the Hormogaunt to the head of a much larger Tyranid, like a Swarm Lord. Doing that though would have taken attention away from the Dreadnought and wasn't what the commissioner had asked for. If you're interested in seeing more conversions, hit the subscribe button, like this video, or check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching.